Hello, I am Mansa Musa, the ruler of Mali. Have some gold, European. You may, you may want to know some a little bit about Mali and who I am. First off, Mali was, was founded in the year 1235 by the Mande-speaking people, and our wealth is, of course, due to gold. The first great ruler of Mali, his name was Sunjata. He originally dethroned a cruel, horrible, unpopular leader, and then he took over Ghana and a few important trading cities. He made a minister, he, made, he then made administrators of three key roles, foreign affairs, finances, and defense. He also reestablished the salt and gold trade, making his capital, Niani, an important trade city. People soon started to call Mali, or er, people started to soon call Sunjata's empire Mali, which means where the king lives. Now, for a little about me. My name is Mansu Musa, and people think we do be Sunjata's empire, or er, Sunjata's nephew. I ruled from about the year 1312 to 1352. I went on a haji, uh, spiritual journey, which is called a haji to Mecca. When I went there, I wanted to show how wealthy Mali was, wealthy and powerful Mali was to all the other civilizations, including the wealthy Europeans. Here's my ship currently taking me to Mecca. Okay. Have some gold, European. And you. The gold is very good. So, this is my, this is my son. He's not named yet. We will call him Gary. So, we're, so in case it's difficult for you to understand Mali, we are going to make some comparisons to a very influential civilization or religion, the religion of Islam. Oh, church and state are not separated in Islamic culture like they are in modern society. They were also not separated in Mali. Both civilizations also heavily focused on religion, with religion dictating much of its life as they, were both, as they both followed Islam. The people of Mali would chain up their children if they were um if they refused to memorize the, Quran, the book of the Quran. This did not happen in Islam, so this is, a, this is an area where Mali was much more strict than Islam. However, Mali was eventually criticized by Ibn Battuta for not following Islam's strict code in some areas. So there are some areas in where Mali follows Islam, like the religion of Islam and the Quran more strict than the actual civilization of Islam. Mm. The qualities that Mali shows are similar to rules. But the constitution of Medina, of the Islamic people, was not structured. And then finally, they both use the Quran as they are Islamic cultures. The, what we were talking about about Islam, that's the civilization of Islam, not the Islamic culture. Oh my god, memorizing the Quran is so annoying. Bro, I freaking hate the Quran, dude. Oh my god, into the chains you go. You will not be set free until you show better memorization of the Quran. How did you change Mali to become more organized? Gold. Well. Gold as a short answer. In depth. So I was able to repel every single rebellion because I'm that military amazing leader that I am. I also, I changed the size of Mali by conquering to more than doubled the size of Ghana. I also set down rulers to govern each provinces, paid them a little bit of gold. I was also a devout Muslim and I built many, many mosques in Timbuktu after my haji, which I showed when I was throwing gold at the Europeans. Timbuktu eventually became more, one of the most important cities in the empire after that, and where mu much of the money came from Ghana, as there were many people traveling to Timbuktu, many scholars, for just to learn about Islam. How did your supposed uncle become significant to Mali, and what did he do? So, we already talked about this. My supposed uncle was a legendary Sunjata. He was a Jelenian king who repelled the Susus and eventually invaded their territories. This led to the Susus being conquered, and then Sunjata established the fantastic empire of Mali. How did you give so much money away on, his ha on your haji? So, we already talked about that a little bit. I'll go more in depth. I was so rich with gold and salt from that trade being reestablished. So, I decided to flex a little bit of our wealth, because why not? I gave so many Europeans gold to show how wealthy, no, you got some, to show how wealthy we were. Also then, because that caused me to be able to forge alliances and flex my power. This would cause other civilizations to not want to invade us and potentially become allies and trade partners with us. This also made so many people know who I was. It's that sweet gold. That's very, in <laughs> that's very interesting, guy. That's very interesting, Mansa Musa. Thanks for telling us. How did the system of government cause Mali to fall? <sighs> After my inevitable death. So I I'm basically a ghost. We'll just go with that. After my inevitable death, Mali was plagued by problems of succession. The rules of succession, uh, a succession being established were terrible, and several times there were dis disputes and even so civil wars led by princes 
competing for the throne. Succession is basically when the of the first ruler's kids or blood relatives then become ruler, and this caused to many because I I we had many many children us us Malians, and this this eventually caused Malians is interesting. Malians is interesting. This eventually caused to many 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 of our princes fighting for the thrones, and that's why Mali eventually fell. All right, cool. Thanks for uh, having this interview with us. Of course, of course. <laughs> This time for Africa Listen to your dad, this is our motto Your time to shine, don't wait in line, it's almost for the for Africa. Time